Welcome to C programming tutorial. Um, let's see. Uh, in our previous lecture, we basically learned about the if statement. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I would suggest that you watch that video before you continue to watch this video. Um, or unless you know you already know about if statement, that's a different thing. Uh, I would. It's this this video and other other tutorials. They are basically a, a part of a big collection of tutorials that base cover pretty much all the aspects of C programming language. I would highly suggest that you click on the link in the description to look at the playlist of all those tutorials and or and you know possibly the link may also be displaying uh, being displayed on the uh, screen video screen here. Um, Anyway, so let's continue with the with the if statement. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we basically learned what the how the if statement looks like. Uh, we also learned that if you want to add, you know, if you want to group multiple statements together, based which need to be executed based on this condition. If the condition is true, you want to to execute more than one statement. You could basically group them together by using braces. Braces start. Braces closed. Um, these will basically allow the, these group of uh, statements either executed or skipped depending upon whether the condition is true or false respectively. You can also have only one statement in that braces that's also okay and single statement you don't even need braces uh, some people say you know some uh, most of the time you know as a, as, a, uh, as a good programming practice you should always put braces here like this so anyway uh, we will you know uh, we'll continue working on it uh, continue with the if statement so we learned that in general if statement looks like this for for now if condition then followed by statement okay this is how if condition if a statement looks like but there is an extension to if statement which is basically the else clause of the if statement which basically says that which which looks like this you know just like if condition statement then there is an else followed by the statement now what what we had before was that if the condition is true this statement gets executed now if the condition is false this statement would be would be skipped now here else this statement which is after else will be executed if the condition is false in other words when the statement this statement is skipped so if the condition if this if this condition is true this statement gets executed and this statement gets skipped if the condition is false this statement gets skipped and this statement gets executed so very simple and this basically covers all the cases kind of you know if you have if, if a lot of time you have like you know if this condition is true you have to do this if the condition is false you have to do something else then you basically put this use the else statement now let's see if we can use this this um, uh, if else construct in our program can we do that um, we kind of can yes we can actually what we could do is for example look at this we covered this if number is greater than 0 then do this we have this if number is equal to 0 then do this now what is the last possibility if the number is not greater than 0 if the number is equal to 0 um, So let, let's let's look at this. So if number is greater than zero, the way it, it executes, this program executes. Let's look at that closely. It actually executes this statement, checks to see if the number is greater than zero, then executes this statement if it is true. It executes this statement, then executes this statement only if it is true. So if it executes this statement, it will never execute any of these statements, but it will still evaluate these conditions. What if we want to avoid that? Because you know, if the number is positive, it is it cannot be zero, it cannot be negative. So we don't even need to check those conditions. So what do we do? So we put an else here. Okay? Why? Because you know everything that if it is not true, then we need to do 
if this condition, if number is greater than zero, is not true, in other words, if the number is not positive, we need to look for it, whether if it is zero or negative number, okay? So all these statements should basically go into the else clause. We want these to be executed only if this is false. If it is true, we know number is positive. We, there is no point in checking for the number to be equal to zero. There is no point in checking for the number to be less than zero because number is greater than zero. We already know. Now, can I leave it like this? No, because we have to first thing is that we have to indent. Always indent. So we indent. Okay. Okay. It is indented now. So that says that if it is l, if there is else, you know. You do this only if the condition is false. If it is true, then you just execute this statement and just move on. Okay? But this is not enough, as I said. Else will have only one statement normally. Okay? If you want to have multiple statements, just like if, you have to put it in the brackets, in these braces. Statement 1, then statement 2, and so on, and all of them in brackets. Okay, this is how you do. So since there are multiple statements here, we need to put them in brackets. Like that. You see that? So we were saying is that execute these statements only if the number is positive. Otherwise, don't even execute them. Okay, so functionally it's not going to change the way the program is being executed. Okay, it will still execute the same way. Let's see. Let me try to run it. Okay, it's asking for to enter a number. So it's right here. So it's asking to enter a number. So we enter a positive number. Okay, it says your number is positive. Why? Because this condition is true. We enter 12. 12 is greater than 0. Yes, it basically comes here. It executes this statement which says that print this message. And then it never even goes in here. Because it always, the condition was true, so it doesn't execute any of these statements, not even check for the conditions at all. And then, you know, the program ends. So what's going to happen if we are going to, if I run this program again and we enter 0, okay? It says your number is 0, but let's see how, how it says number is 0. Let's see. So it comes here, you enter the number 0, the value of number 0, 0 is greater than 0, is false. So this statement is skipped. Remember, we did not put braces here, you know, the brackets, we did not put them here because there is only one statement. So you don't have to do it if there is only one statement. Now, it comes to the else. And would it go inside here and start executing these instructions, these statements? Yes because this condition was false. It skipped this statement, it came here, and it starts executing this statement. So what, is, what does it do? It checks again. There is another if statement. It checks if the value is 0. Yes, the value is 0. So it prints this number. Number is 0. So this condition is true. So it prints this value at this message. Then it checks if the number is less than 0. It basically, it's, yeah, it's going to be false. So it's going to skip this statement and it comes here and then the program ends so we see that it displays the number your number is zero now look at this here you can as you can see this is basically pretty much uh, the same kind of situation here we should not even be executing this ma this statement we should not be checking for less than zero if the number is zero if the number is zero it cannot be less than zero so we should not even be checking for it so how would you change that it's very simple. We basically put an else here. This else belongs, remember, this else belongs to this if. And then we put this in the under braces. And ta-da, we have our programs, program set. Okay, you could indent it here, here too. Okay, we are, our time is up. Please continue to watch the videos. Thank you.